Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I am hiding out in the shade on this very sunny late April afternoon. I promised y'all an update on my pawpaw trees, specifically about how I hand pollinate them. So a little while ago, I made a video where I pointed out the difference between the leaf buds and flower buds on the pawpaw tree. And the reason it's so important to be able to differentiate early on is so you can be watching your pawpaws and be ready for them to be hand pollinated at the right time. So pawpaws, if you aren't familiar with them, um, they are Asamina triloba, the only North American temperate member of the custard apple family. I have some videos on growing pawpaws. They can be tricky to get started in my climate. They are a riparian understory tree in Central and Eastern North America. They don't naturally extend um, into the West Coast. They enjoy specific conditions when they are young and they need special support to get going and be successful here. Once they are fully established, they require little care and can tolerate full sun. So Asamina triloba produces a lovely, well, it's actually kind of an ugly fruit, um, which is part of the reason that it is not commercially grown in the United States. It has no shelf life and it is not an attractive looking fruit, but the flesh inside is a lovely pale creamy yellow with large seeds that are not edible. The flesh has flavor reminiscent of vanilla, mango, and banana, I, I personally feel like. And if you have ever had a custard apple, you can definitely tell they're related. So I grow three different kinds of improved Peterson pawpaws. Pawpaws are a plant that requires some special handling in order to get a good set of fruit. Pawpaws are an ancient tree and they are fly pollinated, which is why the flowers look kind of a brownish to burgundy color and don't smell great. They either have no aroma or depending on the variety, they kind of stink. They are trying to attract flies. You can rely on mother nature, but you'll probably get inconsistent pollination and inconsistent fruit set. So for me, what I do is I use a paintbrush to pollinate them. Now, there are some, some things you can do if you don't want to bother with a paintbrush. You can hang rotten meat in the trees. You can put fresh manure around the base of your trees. You can um, grow your pawpaws in your chicken run where flies are inevitable. Things to encourage fly pollinators. Those kinds of things tend to not be super popular in um, America with our style of gardening and our neighbors. Uh, they may be really sustainable, but pretty sure my neighbors don't want me hanging raw meat from my trees to attract you know, extensive amounts of, of flies. So the easy solution, hand pollinate with a paintbrush. So I wanna talk you through how you do it because Asamina triloba, um, pawpaw fruit, and I wanna be careful that I'm constantly using the scientific name because in many parts of the world, the plant that we call papaya, they call pawpaw. So when I say pawpaw, I'm not referring to the tropical papaya, I'm referring to Asamina triloba. Um, it has a really unique kind of flower in that the flower begins its life as well, obviously as a bud. And when it first begins to open, it is a female flower. And as it matures and opens up, it becomes a male flower. So I'm gonna put some pictures in here. Early on, the female flower is um, greenish with a little bit of a burgundy tinge and just beginning to open up. And that is when you have the uh, stigma of the flower mature, it matures first. You can open the flower and see that it's swollen and um, ready to receive pollen. As the flower ages, what you find is that it turns a dark burgundy brown, the petals open more fully, and instead of seeing that swollen stigma, what you see is mature anthers, and around the inside of the flower is a dusty grayish to yellowish pollen. Um, looks fuzzy inside the flower. And then it is a male flower. It's too late to make fruit from that flower if you haven't already uh, pollinated that flower too late. It's only good for using for um, pollen to give to another flower. Now you have to have two genetically distinct varieties. There are a few um, sort of self-fertile varieties of papa, but they get much better fruit set if two genetically distinct varieties can cross-pollinate. So I take the older flowers from the um, 
one tree, which are the males, and I use the pollen from them on a distinct variety on the newer flowers, which are the females. And then same thing, older flowers on this tree over here to the newer flowers on this tree. And that's how I get my fruit set. So let me show you that process, um, reel it up close, and then I'll be back. All right, here we are in the pawpaw guild. You can see a really nice pyramidal shaped tree. You can cut out the leader to keep it short so you can reach all of the fruit as it grows because it will get up to 20 feet. Now, pawpaw flowers are at prime production before the tree has really leafed out. You can see we're starting to leaf out here. The flowers begin as dark clove colored fuzzy buds and then they begin to turn green. You can see the progression of them maturing and as they get more and more mature, they start to take on some color. Let me show you right here. You can see how this one is starting to get a burgundy hue to it. A lot of fly pollinated flowers have a dark color to resemble uh, meat, basically. So they tend to be brown or burgundy colored. Now this one still has a little bit of green around the edges of the petals. And it has this blush of burgundy. This is a female flower. This is when I want to pollinate it. As the flower ages, it turns all burgundy and eventually it will look like this. This is now a male flower, fully open, dark burgundy. It cannot produce fruit, but it does have pollen and it is ready to be used. So what I do is I actually pluck this and I'm going to use it and dip a paintbrush in and collect the pollen and put the pollen up into my female flowers on another tree. So let me step over to my other tree with this flower and show you what so I'm let's doing. let's look at two flowers to tell the difference between a male and a female even better. So this one, you can see if we open it up really well, inside the stigma is nice and swollen and yellow. That is a female flower and it still can receive pollen and be fertilized. This one is a male flower. So it is a flower that has gone past its um, maturation point in order to be able to pollinate. And you can see here, the stigma is now darker colored and fuzzy looking and all of that around it is pollen. This is what I'm gonna use to pollinate other flowers. So I take my paintbrush here, see if I can do this all one handed. Hold tight with me here. So I wanna take my paintbrush and load up on the pollen from the male flower. There's not a ton of pollen per, per flower, so be careful. I wanna get my pollen all over my paintbrush, and then I wanna reach up inside. My camera will focus here. I want to reach up inside the female flower and spread it all over that swollen stigma, and then that will pollinate. Now remember, I have to go from one tree to a different tree of a distinct variety. Let me show you how I do that real quick. So this flower that is still got a little green, it's still fairly tight, female flower. I wanna reach up with my pollen coated brush and I wanna brush all up inside there really thoroughly and get that pollen up in there. And I wanna repeat that for all of the female flowers on this tree. And then I wanna take this male flower off of this tree and take it back to my other pawpaw and repeat again, making sure to clean my brush thoroughly in between. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more about permaculture orcharding and growing fruit in the Pacific Northwest, permaculture lifestyle, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Um, I have a Patreon as well. I have three new patrons. So I'm, I'm really excited that that is growing. I also am now making a weekly Patreon post just for my patrons. Um, so that's something you can check out. And I'll be back probably tomorrow. I'm here pretty much every day right now because there's so much going on. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be back.